What's up everybody, a spare what a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Subnautica Below Zero. Uh, when we left off in the last episode, we actually made quite a, big, a bit of progress, if I do say so myself, uh, managing to find our first, um, I guess, alien encounter, for the lack of a better term, um, and managed to get Alan stuck in our head, who is the... Um, I guess they're going with Architect. I thought in the original game they called them Precursors, but Precursors is kind of a pretty common name for the ancient alien race that came before type thing. Um, so I guess they're calling them Architects now. Um, but one thing that I want to focus on today is the sea truck. Because as cool as the alien stuff is, we're going to hit a bit of a bottleneck if we can't get a little deeper into the ocean. Um, so, we already have our heavy air tank and our rebreather, and we were using the um, sea glide and the air, air plants and stuff as much as we could, but it still has its limits, so I'd like to get a sea truck going. Now, I think I have pretty much everything that I need for the mobile vehicle bay. I'm about 95% sure I've got everything. The thing that is causing a, a problem yet again is silver, because the, um, the actual sea truck requires, I forget what, uh, the advanced wiring kit, and that requires um, ba a basic wiring kit to start off with. So I need silver, but I can't ever really seem to get a good um, source for it. So I think we're going to journey down into the, I don't know what this place is called. I'm, I'm going to say, I think it was kelp or something. Oh boy. Oh boy. It's this, it's this stuff. There we go. And I've only really found it here consistently. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm not brain dead. There was one here a second ago. Where did it go? I don't think it was this one. But I'll take it. It was up here. There it is. I knew I saw one. Alright, cool. So there's the silver that we'll need. You know what? We'll go ahead and grab some of that sulfur. You never know. Since he went ahead and did us the favor of blowing himself up, might as well make use of it. Um, so I think that's actually all we need. However, I do want to see if we can get a little bit of a surplus going of it. Because there's a couple of other things on my list. What is this? That's weird. I I scanned this already. Whatever. Uh, there's a few other things on my list that require wiring kits. Oh, wait. I have found that the Sea Glide actually works pretty good for getting away from the crash pod things. Actually, you know what? Did they change the name of them? Oh, I guess I can only scan the sulfur. Oh boy. Oh boy. Seconds. Oh, three seconds. Um, isn't there a plant down here? I think there's a plant down here. I hope there's a plant down here. Otherwise, we're about to drown. Plant, plant, plant! I need air. I need an air plant. Okay. Whew. That was close. That was closer than I would have preferred. Um. Oh boy. This is a bad place. Whoa. 30 seconds. That's alien. What are you doing down here? I swear I've been down this place before. Architect artifact. One of 15. Okay, we need to leave. We need to leave. I am not finding nearly enough air plants to make this viable down here at the moment. Um, and we do technically have what we need. 30 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Oh, good. More air. Ooh. There's more. 
Yeah, um, so far, really, they hardly ever can catch up to me when I'm using a sea glide, but somehow that one just had turbo mode activated, apparently. <laughs> um, it does seem like silver has been my really major bottleneck in this particular uh, playthrough. And I think that has... I'm, I'm debating on whether that has more to do with the scarcity or difficulty finding it as much as it does the blueprints I'm trying to build. I'm not really sure. Captain. Um, alright. Pretty sure we need a wiring kit. Because we actually need an advanced wiring kit. Uh, okay, we do need a titanium ingot. Um, let's see here. What else do we need? Oh, the mobile vehicle bay is built in here, isn't it? Yes. So this is just lubricant, computer chip, and titanium ingot. The... where'd you go? The sea truck. And I did some math on the plasteel ingots and the lead, and I don't think I have enough to do both of these, so we're just gonna have to go with the sea truck for now. Um, but I'm gonna finish gathering up all these materials and then build the mobile vehicle bay and I will see you guys out on the surface when we build our seed truck. Okay, so I think I've got everything squared away. So now, I'm just gonna come up here. Um, I'm not really sure how large the sea truck actually is, so we're gonna put it right about over here, I think. Let's get this rearranged here. Okay. So now... Should be able... Okay, we do have the storage module there. Sea truck. Wait, did that say one person sea and space truck? Is that what that said? Because if so... That's kind of interesting. One person, sea and space truck. Well, now that's intriguing. Um, I'm wondering if I should pick this up or not. Ah, oh, we're gonna pick it up for now. Okay, so instead of the sea moth, it looks like we've got a sea truck. Which is kind of interesting because of the whole module thing. How do I get in? Oh, there's a hatch on the top. Okay. And it looks like there's two power cells. There's an upgrade panel here with four upgrade slots. Okay. So I'm guessing the reason it's shaped so oddly is because you're basically supposed to turn this into a train, essentially, what I'm gathering from it. Ooh, it feels a little different than the sea moth too. Whoa, what the? What is that? What was that? How did I get some kind of satellite image? What is going on? I'm hitting back on the analog stick. Uh... Oh, I guess it's my rear view. Oh, okay, it's a rear view mirror. But I think we can all agree it should probably look like it looks in-game, because that looks like I've stumbled across some surface, <laughs> like some surface uh, base or something. It doesn't look like my base. That's cool, but really weird. Cool and very odd. Um, so the crush depth is 150 meters by default. So that's interesting. I've got a couple of other different things I wanted to tinker with to Day. The first being, I really expected the sea, the sea truck to, to take a little longer, uh, but the first being, I want to move this... Oh, attached components must be do here, okay. Uh, I wanted to move, well, actually, let's do this part first. I wanted to move this from a two-floor to a side-by-side, -side, uh, because I momentarily forgot that 
if you connect the aquariums together, or rather the alien containment areas together, um, the that the, the they merge and become one, which is not really what I wanted to happen. So, um, I was gonna say I don't think I can get to that without going back outside. But oh well. Because, yeah, what I'm thinking is I want to move this and then I may do eventually another room either out here, here, or possibly up here. Wait a minute. Can't deconstruct. Should be... Oh. Wait. Because that's attached to the bottom? Hmm. Hmm. I call shenanigans on that. That just means I need to get a lot more um, titanium, I guess. Well, that's unfortunate. Because I was going to... You're exploring has... location uploaded to PDA. You're exploring has reminded me of the location of some of my people's civilization that you might find interesting. Oh, okay. Now that's intriguing. That he's just going to... Well, I say he. I don't know if it is a he. It's a kind of a AI, but whatever. Um, that it's going to like spontaneously just give me information. That's kind of different. Um, tell you what, I think we'll leave this and I may put the bioreactor up there, maybe. I'm not sure. So we'll put the ladder back, but I'm gonna put it over here so that it's not in the way from going... Oh, and also, I found out just in case anyone's ever tried this, don't put the hatch and the ladder in the same spot. It will technically work, but you won't be able to fit to the hatch easily. Or practically. Um, yeah, that kind of threw off my plans, though, because I wanted to put another room here. So I guess I need to go hunt some more titanium. Maybe we can use our newfound sea truck. Who knows? So this is interesting. I decided to kill two birds with one stone since I needed more titanium. I was like, well, I'll just head out um, towards this... Where'd it go? I keep losing it. The artifact thing. And see what we can find. Well, I ran across this area, which seems to have an un... or, or rather, a still-locked uh, lockbox. So I must not have been here already. So, uh, either that or it respawned, but I don't remember being here because this is kind of under one of the ice shelves. Uh, oh, it does say tech already in the PDA. Boo! Maybe I have been here already. <laughs> but then again, that does give me more titanium, so whatever. I suppose that's worth it. Ooh, what is this? Is this like waypoints? What the? Oh! So... I was having a discussion about this in the comments of, an, of a previous episode, and I think there's a fish that's freezing me, but I don't know which one it is. It looks like... if it's the one I think it is... Oh, I can't actually grab this, so that must not be implemented yet. That was pointless. Um, I think it's the one that kind of looks like... I want to say a hummingbird. I don't know that that's accurate, but that's kind of my take on it. Because it kind of looks like a hummingbird. It's got a long snout. And it's kind of small. And it looks like it's spitting at you, I think. It's the one I'm thinking of. And of course, it just froze me a second ago, but now I can't find one. Ah! There you are. One of those. One of those things. It's like a pufferfish hummingbird mix. And I think it's that little spitty thing that's doing that's freezing me, but, you know. That's pretty much the theory, and I have been frozen a couple times, so I kind of feel like it's accurate. They were always kind of around. Um, let's go down into the dark below. I do 
not feel like this truck thing belongs down here. So, tell you what we're gonna... Ow! Tell you what we're gonna do. We are going to use this as a portable air pod. And not the apple kind. And, um... Kind of. Woo! Come on. Kind of go from there. Because I feel like if we follow this tunnel, we'll probably find that artifact. In theory. Hopefully. Maybe. It's hard to tell because, unlike the first game, I actually have no clue as to where I am in relative location. And that was one thing I have I have experienced with this one is I've gotten so used to the first game that I kind of know where most everything is with a general relativity, you know? Like um I'm not always 100% accurate, but I kind of have a gist of where I am at most of the time. But not so much in this game. In this one I'm kind of clueless. So, it's like where I'm at right now. I'm trying to Whoa! That does not look like where I meant to be. Um, I don't think we're getting where I wanted to go. I feel like we're getting further away from that. See, that's the thing, is to go further down, you gotta go through, like, these caverns and tunnels without actually knowing where they go. I'm not sure if they're really helping me get where I wanted to go. It's kind of a conundrum. What is this thing? That looks like it was once important. Hmm. Alright. Well, new plan. Let's, um... Ooh, what is that? Do I have the laser cutter already? Apparently not. That was a convenient stroke of luck. As well as finding all this silver while we're down here. That's very helpful. Of course, when you're looking for silver, you find titanium. When you're looking for titanium, you're finding silver. That's that's the way of things, right? But I'm happy about it because I really have a silver deficit. Uh, this looks promising. Nope, nope, you stay away from me. Frickin' little thief. Sea monkeys, man. They just wanna steal my stuff. Okay, this is looking... promising. We're really close. I just need to get under this... layer. I don't know how. What is that? Oh, it's a sea monkey egg. Oh, laser cutter fragments. Okay, that's helpful. just need to know how to go one layer lower. Oh, this looks promising. Here we go. Hello. New technology acquired. Quantum locker. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, we do have an air problem, though. <laughs> Must surface. Or at least get back to my truck. Or a plant! I'll take- oh, there we go. There's a plant. That's- that's helpful. So this was sort of- this- this episode took an unexpected turn of events, to be honest. I was basically just planning on, um, really focusing on getting what I needed for the sea truck, and then I did that in, like, the first couple minutes. And then I was kind of like, well, now what? Um, so then I decided, well... Let's let's work on the base, but then I didn't have the resources, and then Alan pops up and goes, Hey, here's an artifact. So it's like <laughs> this did not go according to plan. It's going okay. We got plenty of silver and stuff. This is an artifact of some significance. I can tell you more about my culture next time you find culture. In this call, Alan and Robin discuss an aspect of architecture culture, how Alan relates to his own people, and whether humanity tends to behave in a similar or different ways. 
Well, that was a good talk. <laughs> I mean, I know it's, um... I know it's early access, so they're not done with it. That just sounded funny. It's like, by the way, they talk about this. It's like, well, that was a good conversation, wasn't it? I think we all feel a little better now. Oh, man. But yeah, um, so a lot more silver than I expected, so that should help us out quite a bit. But I think we're going to work on the base a little bit more and go from there. Alright, so I've been working on the base a little bit, not too much. Um, mainly just organizing some resources, and this fits perfectly right here. I just now noticed that. That's pretty awesome. Um, I definitely think... Foundations lead. I definitely think we need some more foundations because we're at like three something hull integrity, which isn't terrible, but um, kind of like in the first play, the uh, first few playthroughs of the original game, I kind of like to do a lot more glass, um, but glass weakens the hull integrity, so I'm not really sure I can do that without some more uh, reinforcements. Although. Um, let's see, not just... what are these? That's lithium. That increases hull integrity, but that's significantly expensive in terms of... I don't have a lot of lithium. At least not right now. Let's hope this holds. I really hope it holds. Please hold. Oh, okay, good. I wasn't sure if this hurt the hull integrity or not, but apparently not. Um, alright, so... I don't need a ladder at the moment. Um, what is a hatch? Oh, we do have enough for that. Okay, cool. We're gonna put it on the side here, and then this is going to be... Oh, no. Really? Really now? The giant aquarium did nothing to the hull integrity, but when you put a hatch to the aquarium that is not on the outside of the base, that lowers the hull integrity. Cuz... science. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I think we're going to make this one over here the peeper pin, if you will. Okay, sorry about that uh, abrupt cut. I had something come up, and I had to pause it for a second. Um, now, one thing that I'm thinking of is we made this over here. We've got a peeper tank now, and we've separated them so that we should have equal populations for our food and water, which is always good, but I think since I can't seem to remove this, I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I'm not sure what I want to put here, but I think for now we're going to do a bioreactor, because why not? Um, it'll make a good backup power source kind of thing, and it'll also make use of this top room that we don't really have a purpose for now. Um, but I have to admit, I'm fairly impressed with the solar panels in this one. Um, I mean, I've got three of them. They're a little more expensive than the first game, but they seem to do more in that um, with only three of them, we're up to 225 charge, which I think is pretty good. And everything I've been doing on running my base and everything, I haven't had hardly any... I don't think I have had any power outages. Like, I barely hit into the power supply that I have. So, I'm kind of happy with that so far. And I think we have enough silver. We got plenty of silver. I say plenty, but it felt like more than four to six. Oh well. Um, I think we need a wiring kit and the lubricant, which we happen to have already. So we're going to boot that up. And I think this is going to serve as our secondary slash uh, backup power supply. Is kind of the thought process that I have. Wait a minute. It says inactive. Ah, there we go. And then it'll spin and we get the, the green goop. Um, now one thing is... Oh, okay, it's actually showing you on this little graphic now. I was wondering about that. Um, I thought maybe that was the rotting level, and I think that's the rotting level when you're outside of it, if that makes sense. Um, but once you put them in there, then I think that's actually... Um, 
I think then, that's basically the charge, like, how much fuel you can get out of it. Um, also, want to try some different ones here. And see if various different things give me more power. Um, more of a science experiment than anything. But, yeah, I think we're doing pretty good, though. Got a pretty decently established base. Let's throw... I don't know. These honestly seem to be decaying at a similar rate. So maybe that's just the thing. I don't know. We're gonna throw them in like that and see what happens. Um, I am a little bit on the edge of not totally sure where to go from here at the moment. Um, we could hunt for... what do we need? Lithium? Was it lithium we were short on for the truck storage? No, it was, well, lead. Lead and lithium for plasteel ingots and wiring kits, so more silver. So we need that. Um, so I have a little bit of a mix here. Now grant you, by the time you guys on YouTube are seeing this, again, there will be a little bit of a discrepancy in terms of the um, time frame, and I will probably have filmed the next episode already, but I am a little bit of trying to figure out what I should do next. I, I can, I'm kind of getting the vibe that the story is in skeletal form in terms of even if they have it all the way through to the end because I've heard that they changed the ending recently um, so even if they have it all the way through the end it does seem very bare bones at the moment in terms of there's a lot of temporary stuff and not fully uh, finished stuff so I think exploring is our next step I think now that we have the sea truck um, it's going to be taking the sea truck somewhere. Well, actually, hold up. I do have another option, and that is the depth upgrades. So I would need, I still need lithium, and I have what I need to make enameled glass for that. I would need no more enameled glass. I think I have at least one ruby, maybe two? I'm not sure. Maybe I don't, because I think it was the gel sacks that gave me the aerogel. Um, and then nickel I definitely don't have any of. So these two are relatively in the realm of doable, but I need to get a modification modification station um, in order to do that, which actually I could make. Okay, so I'm thinking next episode we're going to make a mod station and then look around for some more lithium and um, try and make a depth upgrade and kind of keep taking the sea truck deeper is kind of the general scheme of things, I think. So that's what I think we're going to uh, tackle in the next episode, but I think we're going to wrap things up here for today. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.